The finale of season three of The Mandalorian wasn't met with a lot of twists and shocking moments, just a couple, where one of them, of course, was the destruction of the Darksaber. Now, essentially, Bo-Katan is left without her device to represent her as a ruler of Mandalore. Only the Mythosaur remains, and by the way, the episode ended with Grogu staring at the living waters and the Mythosaur opening its eyes. Things seems a bit shaky now for Bo-Katan. Me, personally, I don't think the Darksaber was completely destroyed. It is just too valuable of an item for Dave Filoni, for George Lucas, and even in canon for Luke Skywalker, who all basically commented on what the Darksaber means. We're going to talk about that later on in the video. In a way, it's even baffling because all the time, Moff Gideon was taunting Bo-Katan for her to give away the Darksaber once more to him. Let him be the ruler. I think in the end, the question of why did he destroy the Darksaber, why did Moff Gideon destroy it, knowing the importance of it, is if he can't have it, then nobody can. This is why he ultimately went on to destroy the hilt, at the very least, because my suspicion is, of course, that the Darksaber is not fully destroyed. It will come back in a new form, possibly even better. Why do I say this? Well, because only the hilt was supposedly destroyed. The crystal is just intact and in place. Now that they have the Mandalore Forge, anything could be constructed constructed in there. Furthermore, it's the Skywalker lightsaber thing that they split, essentially Rey and Kylo Ren split it in half and it still came back in a new version. So hilts don't really matter in Star Wars by this point. They used to matter, but not so much anymore. The crystal is the main focus area, and I think that that's the way the Darksaber will come back in Season 4, possibly even in the Ahsoka show, in a new, better version. Because as I said, it just means too much. It is one of those lightsabers that is in the mythos. It is story-wise, at the very least, indestructible. Even George Lucas at one point talked about the Darksaber. As with a lot of things in Star Wars, the origins of Darksaber and where it first started was in the mind of George Lucas. The idea for it first came in the making of the Clone Wars series. Although it was originally intended that Prey Vizsla was going to fight using a Vibro Blade, a very familiar weapon in the expanded universe, or what we now call Legends, the Vibro Blade was now modified, and this was a request directly that came from George Lucas. He and his creative team altered the Vibro Blade into now an archaic black bladed lightsaber. And they went on to name this the Dark Saber. Many fans will remember that the Dark Saber first appeared in the episode The Mandalore Plot. George Lucas went on to premiere this in 2010, and it was first used in a duel between Prey Vizsla and Obi-Wan Kenobi. But the story of the Darksaber doesn't just stop there. In the Star Wars show, Sam Witwer even went on to explain that during the production of Solo, a Star Wars story, it was originally planned to reintroduce Maul's original lightsaber that he had in the scene with Kira. However, Sam Witwer being the Star Wars history buff that he is, he suggested that they either use Darksaber in the Solo Star Wars movie or his Star Wars Rebels lightsaber resembling more of a staff. They ultimately went with the red lightsaber, although for many, and myself included, I deem this as a mistake, as the dark saber would have looked beautiful in the solo Star Wars movie. Previously to The Mandalorian, the last time the dark saber was seen was, was in this scene, Ezra Bridger and an older Maul. Dave Filoni and the team went on to expand a bit more about the dark saber, telling us that in the days of the Old Republic, the dark saber was kept at the Jedi Temple. After the passing of its creator, Tare Vizsla, the first Mandalorian ever that was inducted into the Jedi Order, revealing that the Darksaber does have Jedi origins. However, it was taken by the Mandalorians of House Vizsla, who raided the Jedi Temple during the Old Republic's fall. Descendants of House Vizsla used it to kill many Jedi afterwards and rule all of Mandalore for many years. The Darksaber therefore went on to be a passing mantle of the rulers of Mandalore. If you have read Star Wars The Secrets of the Jedi, the new canon book from Mark Sumerak that came out a couple of years ago, you know that inside that book, Luke Skywalker had a lot to say about a lot of things. The Secrets of the Jedi is an expansive book and incorporates a lot of lore from the Clone Wars, the Star Wars films, and even beyond that. 
Inside the book, we see the history of the Jedi Order and various other things interpreted by Luke Skywalker. Essentially, we see all these things from his point of view. Luke addresses the Force priestesses from the Clone Wars, many iconic Jedi such as Qui-Gon Jinn, yes, even Qui-Gon Jinn guys, something that we never actually got to see in the films and in the comics. We never understood if Luke knew all these things, but by The Last Jedi we see that Luke has read up a lot up until that point. As a young Luke though, he had no idea about anybody else except for Obi-Wan and Yoda. Briefly, I just want to give you this piece of Star Wars golden nugget, Luke talking about Qui-Gon. He says, while he may not be a Skywalker by blood, Qui-Gon Jinn shares a deep connection to my family's history through the Jedi Order. This revered Jedi Master trained Obi-Wan Kenobi, who in turn trained my father, and then later became my mentor. Qui-Gon was well known for listening to the Force more than the Jedi Code, a trait that often put him at odds with the Jedi High Council. Master Jin was killed by Sith Lord Darth Maul prior to the start of the Clone Wars, but he was the first of only a few Jedi who discovered a way for his spirit to transcend its physical form. Hearing Luke call Qui-Gon Master Jin and actually even mentioning Darth Maul as well is just a treat and I highly recommend you guys get this book because inside this book he also talks about sabers, how sabers work and sabers, lightsabers incorporate the dark saber as well. So he's basically talking about weapons that are powered by kyber crystals and this is what the dark saber is. In the last episode we saw that Din Djarin had a lot of difficulty wielding the dark saber. It was becoming heavier and heavier as he was fighting with it because as the armorer said, he is fighting against the Darksaber, trying to control it and not against his opponent. So this is what Luke had to say about this in the book Secrets of the Jedi. He said, when you're attuned to the Force, your thoughts and actions all become part of the same flow of energy, which is then directed through the Kyber Crystal and into your lightsaber's blade. Fascinatingly enough, this goes perfectly in line with what Kanan said as well. So we see that there is this constant line of understanding in the canon universe where writers and show creators alike are all converging into one key point that lightsabers, darksaber, whatever you want to call it, any weapon that is being powered by a kyber crystal, we can see that they affectionately work the same way. Even a lightsaber is not that different from a darksaber. This coming straight from Luke Skywalker, one of the greatest Jedi Masters to have ever lived. Now let's compare what Luke said to what Kanan Jarrus said about the Darksaber and you'll see the similarities. This is what I said a couple of days ago, but a much more detailed explanation is found in Star Wars Rebels Season 3, the episode titled Trials of the Darksaber, where Sabine Wren is training with the Darksaber for the very first time. Kanan Jarrus, a former Jedi, is her instructor. Once they start fighting, Sabine actually says that the Darksaber feels heavier than she thought. With this, Kanan immediately explains why. You see, according to a Jedi at one point in time, the Darksaber is considerably harder to wield than a lightsaber. Kanan goes on to tell Sabine that the energy constantly flows through the crystal. You're not fighting with a simple blade as much as you are directing a current of power. Your thoughts, your actions, they become energy. They flow through the crystal as well and become part of the blade. Basically what Kanan is trying to tell Sabine here is that someone who lacks discipline and control will have a very hard time with the Darksaber. More importantly, acceptance of their thoughts and feelings. Now, we know two things by watching Din Djarin in this episode. One, he is not a lightsaber duelist. We have barely, if ever, seen him wield a proper saber. Yes, he fought Moff Gideon with the Beskar spear, 
but it wasn't a proper blade. Secondly, his emotions are all over the place. Pretty, pretty fascinating if you ask me. Both of these lines actually sound extremely similar, if not the same. So you can see that the lightsaber and the darksaber do not differentiate that much when it comes to whoever is wielding them. They need to be in control of their thoughts, their emotions, their actions. Be attuned with the energy of the saber. That's essentially it, but you can read it in a myriad of ways, whatever it is, you cannot be conflicted. You need to be stoic about this. So of course, since these two Jedi Masters offer their opinion, I would love to know what do you guys think as well about the Darksaber, the Lightsaber, and what is the proper method to use it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and if you enjoyed, leave a thumbs up down below, subscribe for dailies. Now you're gonna have an awesome day, Star Wars fans. I'll see you in the next video, and may the Force be with you. Until then.